Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at tissues, organs, organ systems and organisation for your A-level biology. The next level up in organisation is tissue. The definition of tissue hasn't changed since GCSE, so it's a tissue is a group of similar cells working together to form a specific function. I've underlined the word similar here because we need to remember that. It's a way of being able to identify cells as being in the same tissue. They look similar to each other. And obviously, they normally have the same properties, the same adaptations. They're those specialized cells we were just talking about coming together to form a tissue in order to carry out a specific function. So there are sp some specific animal and plant tissues that are adapted to carry out their specific roles, either in the body or in a plant. And you need to be able to know those tissues and explain how they carry out their function. Animal tissues. There are some examples of mammal tissues that we need to know. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and nervous tissue. Let's start by looking at epithelial tissue. So the function of most epithelial tissue is lining free space in the body. So anywhere where you have a lining that connects to the outside or the lining of a tube, then you're going to have epithelial tissue. The features of this tissue are that the cells are very close together. There are no blood vessels between the cells. It can be smooth, like squamous epithelium, or there can be projections such as microvilli or cilia. They have quite short cell cycles, which means they're turned over or they die and are replaced quite quickly. And they can carry out a range of functions, including absorption, filtration, excretion and secretion. Okay, let's look at connective tissue. The function of connective tissue is to hold structures together and provide support. The features of this tissue are that it is mostly made of a matrix of non-living proteins and polysaccharides. This separates the cells and it's what allows the cells and the tissue to have these unique properties. Connective tissue can withstand forces such as weight. An example of a connective tissue we have to know is cartilage. Hyaline cartilage, which is often connected to bones and also forms things like the trachea and your larynx. Fibrocartilage, which is found between the vertebrae, making up vertebral discs, and also around the kneecap. And elastic cartilage, which forms the outer structure of your ear, which is obviously quite flexible, and your epiglottis. Muscle tissue. The common features of muscle tissue is that it has lots of blood vessels. The cells that form this tissue are called fibres, and muscle cells contain specialised organelles called myofibrils, and these are able to allow the structures to contract. There are three types of muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle. This type of muscle is what causes your bones to move. Cardiac muscle. This is found in the walls of the heart. It causes the heart to beat. And finally, smooth or involuntary muscle. This is found in the walls of the intestine, blood vessels, the uterus and the urinary tract. And the rhythmic contracting and relaxing of this muscle forces substances through these tubes. An example is peristalsis in the small intestine. We also need to know some plant tissues. Starting with epidermal tissue. Just like the epidermis or skin layer in animals, this is the same kind of external layer in plants. You can see it at the top and bottom of leaves. The tissue has flattened cells. They lack chloroplasts, so they do not carry out photosynthesis, and they provide the protective covering of both leaves, roots, and stems. Some of these produce a waxy cuticle layer that sits above them, and this helps to maintain the plant's waterproofing and reduce water loss. Vascular tissue. This is organised into vascular bundles in the stem. The xylem tissue carries water and mineral ions up the plant from the roots to the leaves. The phloem tissue transports sucrose produced from photosynthesis from the leaves to roots, flowers, shoots and any other plant part that requires that sucrose. Meristem tissue. This contains stem cells. It's found in the tips of roots and shoots and the cambium of vascular bundles. The cambium is found in between the phloem and the xylem in the middle of the vascular bundles. The cells in meristem tissue have thin walls and no chloroplasts. And this is where differentiation takes place to produce 
new vascular tissue, for example, or new cells at the tips of roots and shoots. The cells have small vacuoles and anywhere where you look at this tissue, whether it's in the cambium or the tips of roots and shoots, you will see many dividing cells. The meristem tissue in the cambium produces new xylem and phloem cells. These are highly specialized cells to produce the vessels. In xylem, the cells lose their end walls so that there is no interruption to the flow of water. They also create lignin in their cell walls, which provides strength, flexibility, and also waterproofing. Phloem cells lose their organelles and they just have a very, very thin layer of cytoplasm. They develop sieve plates on their end walls, which you can see here. So they develop holes in the end of their cell walls. They associate with companion cells, which can provide the ATP required that they need to do things like active transport because they no longer have any organelles. The next level of organization up from tissue is an organ. An organ is made up of a group of tissues. And again, this group of tissues works together to carry out a function. There are lots of different animal organ examples that you will have heard of. We're going to look at three different ones. So the lungs, for example, they count as an organ and their function is to exchange gases. The heart is an organ and its job is to pump blood around the body. And finally, the stomach is also an organ and its job is to digest food. There are also lots of different organs in plants. Roots are organs. These absorb water and mineral ions as their function. Leaves are organs. Their function is photosynthesis and gas exchange. The stem is an organ and its role is support and transport. And finally, the flower, that's an organ and that has a role in sexual reproduction and also seed dispersal. The next level of organisation up from an organ is an organ system. This definition, again, is very similar. So organ systems are groups of organs that work together to carry out a specific function. Some examples of organ systems from humans, it's obviously the circulatory system is one. So this is obviously made up of the heart and blood vessels, and the function is to transport substances around the body. The nervous system, which is made up of the brain and the spinal cord and all the nerves, its function is to control and coordinate the body. And then the digestive system. This contains many organs, including the stomach, the small and the large intestines, the liver, the mouth, the gallbladder, the esophagus, many organs in this system. And this function of the system is to digest and absorb nutrients. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches. 